Can we start on Brexit? You are probably the person with the best view on it, or someone who follows it very closely. Over the past few days, you've seen a little bit of softening in the British tone. You've seen a slight element of movement. And the British now seem to be saying, look, can we, can we grab some bits of the single market in exchange for things? Do you think it's possible to cherry-pick um, the European Union as the British seem to now want to do? I think the first thing to, uh, to remark here is that uh, the process for Britain exiting the European Union will not commence until Article 50 is triggered. Prime Minister May has said she will do that before the end of March 2017. That's a formal letter to the Commission. After that, the negotiations will start in, 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 in earnest. Now, all of the comments that are made and the speculation and the rumours are only that. Until such time as there is clarity about where the horizon is going to be, you can't uh, decide with any certainty as to what the outcome is going to be. But you must have some kind of principles, and presumably one of them is that you, you wouldn't want the European Union to be cherry-picked. Certainly not, and that's been made clear already by many European leaders. One of the fundamental principles of participating in the European Union is that if you want access to the most developed market on the planet, if that is the single market, then you must uh, cater for those freedoms, one of which is freedom of movement of people. Um, and there will be no concession given by uh, Europe in that regard. What about the timing? You've, you've said that two years probably isn't enough. It's going to go on longer. Do, if you had to make a guess about what the eventual date of the British leaving would be, what, what would it be? It's impossible to say, John. Um, you see, nobody's left the European Union before. This is the first time that a country under the treaty is actually going to leave. So you've got 50 years of regulations and directives and legislation dealing with the, uh, with the relationship between Europe and the United Kingdom. We joined on the same day. So to end that in a two-year period is probably impossible. Uh, so I think that you'll have a transition period beyond the negotiations. And it's important to remember that Britain remains a member of the European Union until it has left. Mm. And that means that it accepts its responsibilities, will pay its way and will contribute as it, as, as it should. It's sort of awkward in the sense that at meetings of the 28, as all the members of the European Union, you will have side meetings of the 27. Yes. We're making arrangements uh, without formal negotiations as to the contingencies that might have to be considered. And we've a plan about that ourselves for quite some time, dealing with the particular circumstances that Ireland finds itself in. I'm interested by those circumstances. Where, where, do, you, where do you see it in terms of positive and negatives? You know, you've obviously got the huge negative of a major trading partner separating in some ways. On the other hand, you're here talking to bankers, you're, you're seeing a lot of people who might conceivably move jobs from London to say, Dublin. I would say in my time on the European Council and from observations before that, Britain was always a really important member of the European Union and was a voice for a change and was a voice for a vision for the future. Uh, obviously the decision then in Brexit uh, is, uh, came as a shock. Mm. It's something I didn't want to see, something that I, I didn't want, but I have to respect because it's a democratic decision, so we get on with it. Um, so, so a country leaving uh, will be the subject now of, of pretty intense negotiations.